Hey everyone. Hi. What's going on? How you been? It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> it's Ben and Kelly here with hey. the Bread and Wine live cast. I don't know who came up with that. I think it was Drew. Mr. Kaiser is in the house too, helping us make this happen. So uh, we need a we need a Kaiser cam with a K. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, we just want to give a little update of what's been going on with us. Um, yeah, it's been, I guess, probably a few months now since we've had another podcast, and uh, it's been busy. We've been with the kids, and it's been quite crazy at times, but really great. And uh, yeah, the kids are back in school, so we are back on the podcast now. So hanging out with you. Um, we just got back from a few days in Canada. Kelly, do you want to move to Canada? No. Okay. Why not? Um, because it's so freaking cold. <laughs> and it's like apparently the most beautiful time of the year for them right now. Um, which it was stunning. Which the most beautiful time of the year for them is not summer. And I don't really, my brain does not com- compute that. So um, summer is always the best. Uh, so yeah, it was a little chilly and windy. Got a little wind burn. We did. Um, what did we see? But it was fun. Um, we did a lot of seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to uh, Newfoundland specifically, which was the easternmost, well, St. John's, and it's the easternmost point of the entire continent of North America, which is a little fun fact for you out there. Absolutely. Um, and we went to Cape Spear. Spear. Yeah. Cape Spear. Yeah. And um, Mount Signal or something like that. What's yeah. That What's it called? Signal Hill. Signal Hill. Yeah. Yeah. And um, apparently like the Titanic was just 300 miles away, which is, I know it sounds far. It's not that far. Um, so, yeah. And we heard a lot of fun little facts about history and <laughs> things. Yeah. And the people were so... It was beautiful. Yeah. Good it was, Lord, it was beautiful. It was absolutely stunning. The people were so warm, welcoming. Canadians are so nice. Yeah. Like, do you know any Canadians? Because if you don't, you probably should. Um, if we're going to dive into the Enneagram, they're the nine. They represent the whole nine image, yeah. which they're just real friendly and, yeah, go with the flow and happy. And, See both sides to everything. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they're very accepting and warm and hospitable mm-hmm. people. So it was really nice um, catching up with people that we haven't seen in a long time there and meeting new faces and... So fun fact, we led worship at this theater that yes. got renovated. Oh, they spent a lot of money renovating the space. It and it's like one of the beautiful. most historical places in Saint, downtown St. John's. Yeah. Um, if you're watching this and you're from Canada, gosh, really, it's so sad. Um, and I'm so sorry, but it was fun for a minute. Um, and I hope everything gets better. But for those that you don't know that happened, um, we played there on, I can't remember. A what, Sunday night. A Sunday night. Yeah. And Wednesday morning at like the wee hour, so it was still dark, someone reported smoke coming from there. And apparently the place was burning. Yeah. I think someone actually might have. Yeah. There's like, they suspect arsony. Yeah. Um, which the is anime. Crap. Like, come on. Why would you do that? Come Stupid. Come on. It was so, and they were, I mean, yeah, they put a lot of time. So it's a, it's a special place for that area. And they had been, you know, just really praying yeah. and. I think it's going to be a good spot for for them in that area. So, it's in like the downtown St. John's, which is the first street they believe of North America. It's called Water Street. So, boom, it's cool. So yeah, History. we we had a great time up there. Um, it was beautiful, beautiful time together. We and did a lot of driving. We literally drove from the easternmost point to the southern point yeah. to the north point of yeah. Newfoundland. So we got to see. You know, we, did, we spent a lot of time in the car just driving and um, seeing the beautiful scenery there and just chit-chatting and catching up and with, with the band guys. So yeah. it was good. It was a good, good time. Drew, you got a, you got a photo from, from the spot? We were out <laughs> at Cape Spear. This is a, is uh, that the whole band photo? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Dash. Hey, Daniel. It was awesome. It was fun. Um, and also, just quick update. So we had our first ceremony gathering uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, thanks for everyone just joining us. It was 
really special. Kelly had the idea of like, why don't we just do a night of just worship and music? And so we did that. And it felt really special. I mean, I walked away from the night. I asked Kelly, I was like, 1 to 10, what did you think of the night? And uh, she was like, I feel like a 7 or an 8. And then she was like, what did you think? And I was like, I don't know, like a 5 or a 6. And I think I realized I'm so used to, like, let's play a few songs and then, like, toss it to someone else. Someone else speak. Someone else do something. Let's have a guest then, you know. I just, I, I'm not used to feeling that, um, I don't know what it is. The Responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like to collaborate (laughs) and you like to bring everybody in. But I think what those nights are important for is to, is for us to provide something for people who are used to providing something Yeah, yeah. and they get to just (sighs) exhale and, um, worship in whatever that way that they want to without any expectations. And, um, and Drew's wife even said it felt like a like more of a, a time of like creating a sacred space for people. Yeah. Space to uh, to pray, to worship, to listen, to contemplate. And it was just um it was really spacious. I mean, even between the songs, sometimes we just sit there for a few mm-hmm. even minutes, you know? And it was just a time um, that felt really, really really good so mm-hmm. we shared a few new songs and, uh, and it wasn't too cold and it wasn't too hot it was yes! so nice it's a, it's a miracle the one miracle we'll believe in <laughs> yeah. so everybody you oh. never know so anyways if you're uh, you know in the area come next o- Friday October 20th yep and Friday night yep 8pm bring your lounge chair if you want to or a blanket if you want to um and your wine if you want to. No pressure. No pressure. You don't have to drink. It's not a big deal. We don't care either way. We're not judgy. Um, and yeah, just bring your friends and, you know, set your expectations low and, and just... That's the total happen. opposite of what... Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, come on, let's be honest. If you walked around in this life with your expectations always high, you would just be pissed all the time. Is that not? Is that not That's like? It's just the opposite of like what every church sorry. is going for. Is like let's raise our expectations. No, let, let's con- let's not confuse hope with expectations. Hope just, and expectations are very different. I just thought that was. I just wasn't used to hearing. Hey, when you come, hey, when you, lo- when you set them low, like nothing go wrong. When, when you come, lower your expectations. <laughs> you will love us. You walk away blown away. You won't care that you're hearing the same damn songs for the past two years. <laughs> you're gonna do that song again, again. Oh, okay. oh man, we need there to are, get. There, there are some new ones. Just we are to working say. on some new ones, real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly's in the studio with a new song called Breathe and yeah. one other one. And I have a song called Forgiveness that we're going to be working on. So, uh, yeah, we're excited about that. And there sure. are new ones that we're yeah. writing and, and, you know, finishing. So yeah. I do feel like, um, you know, we're, we are dying, joking around about lowering our expectations. But it does, um, we are not trying to, like, create another Sunday morning kind of church deal. You know, we are trying to create a space where you can have what we would call communion with God, oneness with God, union with uh, the Father. So, uh, and that's not always like quick to the point, you know what I mean? Sometimes when you're having a conversation with someone, even like tonight, we don't know where this is going to go. So if you'd like to go somewhere, please input. (laughs) Absolutely. But that feels like, that is like connection with God. It's like sometimes we come in with these ideas and then sometimes we hear something, uh, you know, the chorus of whisper, tell me words I thought I'd never hear. Like sometimes these words come that you are not expecting that you hear in your heart. And it feels like God might be wanting to say something to you or lead you in something that you weren't ready for. So we even try to come in with nights of like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. We just want to create an openness of God. We want to experience you. We want to lean into what your, you know, Mm -hmm. your presence and see what happens. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we invite you into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got a few people uh, popping in. So thanks for uh, joining in we the have conversation. Some, we have 
Mary's Town people. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful people in Canada. That's, that's so great. fun. Um, yeah. So what, I don't know, what else do you feel like, Kelly, that I'm putting you on the spot, uh, that you are, I don't know, uh, reading or learning or exploring in this season of where you are, what are you kind of intrigued by or what's helping you, what's challenging you? Oh, oh, hmm. How do I want to answer that question there? That's a vague question. It is a little vague. Um, you want to reel it in a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it could go into like a song that's speaking to you from some song that any artist that's like, oh man, that, that hits me deep. Or, uh, you know, a story you've read, a scripture you've read, a song from, I don't know, a friend, an idea, a conversation, anything that's like struck you like mm-hmm. this past week that's been like, oh, I needed that. That was good. Um, I don't, I don't, okay, I'll just say this. For the sake of being honest um, and being human, I think that we, we, I've talked about this before in podcast world, and um, I think that I have been in a spot where I haven't really understood much of what's going on around me, um, and I'm just kind of trying to gracefully take life in right now mm-hmm. because a lot of me wants to... Um, <clears throat> judge what was happening in my life or um sorry katie <laughs> katie Dees, shout out she yeah actually i literally thought of the song um stuck in a rat killers the killers they're coming on my birthday on in january so we're all gonna go and slay that night anyway um so i've i've been trying to be really graceful with life and say I don't really understand what is happening. Um, I don't know why I feel this way or that way. So um, I'm trying to be really lax in the way that I respond to my perceptions. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Um, I hit a really, really low point, unfortunately, um, with, and there were triggers for it. And I, had to figure out what I was going to do with it. And, um, and with some help, with, with the help of some, of a couple really, really dear friends of mine, um, wise women, um, they helped me realize some things just about who I am and, and remembering and reminding me of who I am and what, what I'm here for, my purpose and da, da, da. Um, Blah, blah, blah. I, I, if I'm honest, like I get really insecure because I, I know that people don't like talking about pain and people don't like talking about the sad things or like the, the rut or the, um, the loneliness because those are such low moments and no one really knows how to respond and no one's going to be excited for sadness. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of keep to myself and I've and I've kept to myself except you know with, for a few people who I've, I know that really um have 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 something to say to pull me out and have like pointed things to say to help me um um uh, move um and evolve out of those moments um so yeah I kind of go back and forth like even right now I'm like gosh am I really saying this I don't know if I should be saying this because no one wants to hear oh Kelly's sad oh da 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 um, but that's just the honest place of where I am and I'm not as sad as I was I'm certainly not as sad as, sad as I was like yeah. three weeks ago yeah um, and was it the encouragement of some friends reminding you who you were or is it your after hearing that, you started to believe it again that got you to move forward? What was it, the thing that, like, really... I think I think that it is the idea that I, I, we all, we all build... We all are affirmed in this world by the things that we believe. So if I believe that... 
um, I am worthless, then I am going to see things in the world and, and that message will be mm-hmm. affirmed. Yeah. Like, oh, that person didn't say hey to me. Oh, she didn't even see me or he didn't even see me. I'm completely worthless. Yeah. But is that really true? Or who knows what they were dealing with, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just a teeny tiny example. If I'm, if I'm believing the message that, gosh, like I am so awesome. I am amazing. I am killing it. And that same person didn't say hi to me, then I would be thinking in my head, oh, they just, you know, they, they might have felt a little like I didn't want to bother her. Or, you know, I know she's busy or I know she's probably doing this. Da, 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 so I'm just not going to bother. And that would affirm me thinking that I'm awesome, which is ego. Let's just clarify all of this is ego and personality. Um, and I, I think that I was reminded that I got really, really tightly sw- swirled into this perspective um, of who I am, which was false. And all our perceptions are false. Let's, let's get real deep there. Like all of our perceptions are false. Mm. The one true thing that we can know is when we throw out all of the parts of us that are offendable and respond with excitement or have have motive those all things all those things are false the things that are true are this experiences of beauty that we have the experiences with friendship where we feel this connection that's intangible that we know is happening that as we know is fusing those things are true um and i've begun to put my weight more in those things than in man, I'm not doing enough. I'm not being wow. creative enough. I'm not expressing myself enough. I'm expressing myself too much. I'm too much this, too much that. And, yeah. and putting markers and rules on how I should be. Yeah. Um, these beautiful people help me realize like I'm being way too hard on myself and I just need to, you know, take a spiritual Xanax. and just kind of chill out (laughs) so um anyway i'm getting hot talking about it oh get it girl (laughs) (laughs) um someone wrote in just a question who would be a good guide for you if you are dealing with you know sadness or struggling with your identity um who's been a what what things have been helpful guides for you okay so with all the talk of the enneagram I'm going to just address this one thing. The Enneagram is a very helpful tool, but it's also been very detrimental to me um, because when when I, you know, st- really started studying it, I, it was like, this is who I am. Oh, you are this. Oh, you're right. I am this. Oh, my gosh. I am this. I am this. Mm-hmm. And then I think I just swirl in that, and I don't get out of that, that funnel. I don't move toward, oh, so move from that that ego that personality that character that you have you know taken upon yourself to to um express yourself in and i'm not i'm not evolving into my truest self or or correcting myself and and being able to go oh i'm that's that's my ego talking i stuck for for way too long i stuck in the self lashing mm-hmm. part of it yeah. So now I, I actually am giving like I'm. I totally love the Enneagram, but I'm not letting it take so much weight. Like I'm, I'm setting the book down, so mm-hmm. to speak. Like after reading that last thing that I just read about mm-hmm. the four and uh, whatever, um, I'm going okay. You know, right now for me, I love it. I love the tool, but I'm just going to set this aside because I need to focus on the things that are beautiful and the things that I love. And this is putting like I already. I already have the messages in my mind constantly going like I need to be better or mm-hmm. I'm not enough or yeah. da, da, da. so I don't need a, a book to remind me of that. I need to focus on the beautiful things. I need to surround myself with people who are sending me those same messages and, um, and lifting me from that spot. So, um, which there is some encouragement from people like Richard Rohr who say, in the beginning, people get excited about the Enneagram, so they put it at the front of their minds. So then they, for the first six months or a year, yeah, you're just yeah, yeah. judging yeah, everyone, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of natural because you're like, wow, this tool is powerful. 
But then eventually you evolve. You're like, oh, you put it in the back of your mind. So it's not the forefront of everything you're thinking. But at the same time, you do become aware. It, it, it helps you with awareness mm-hmm. to move into love yeah. and compassion. Yeah, so I want to talk about that because yeah. because my, resol- my New Year's resolution for this year was I wanted to grow in self-discipline and self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And holy moly. That's happened. My self-awareness has like... I feel like a freaking eagle, like everything. I can see everything. And um, I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at other people. Like con- it's just constant. And I, and I hate it. It's like a, it's, it's become actually an actual prison because I, I don't know the next step to, to go, okay, so now that I recognize it, what do I do with it? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that I've been learning now hearing, hearing, you know, the typology podcast, um, Ian Cron. Which is a great podcast um, which is a great for podcast people. For, Typology, T Y P O L O G Y. Yeah, it's great. It might be helpful for you. It might not yeah, be. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's both for me. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I wish you wouldn't have said that. Now I'm gonna go cry. Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes it's really freeing and helpful, and ed- and educational. Yeah. Um, but right now, um, gosh, says the four. I'm reading a book called Of Love and Loneliness. And I'm not sure who um, asked the question that of about you know what am I reading or hearing hope from, but um, that book has really been helpful for me to um, really kind of tear off all the definitions of what what of how we operate, like how the mind operates, what the mind is responsible for in our thinking and how it's connected to our emotions and to the way that we love and express ourselves. And then that is being attached to loneliness and and what, how, where do we feel loneliness? Do we feel loneliness in the mind or do we feel loneliness in the heart? Um, and Or do we feel it in the spirit? And they just, the, the, the author um, just, she does such a, a phenomenal job of breaking it, everything down and kind of letting you just, you know, have, have some freedom yeah. um, there. Because when we get in these places of sadness um, or struggling with, your, with ego and identity, we, it's almost like we put ourselves in a box and say, okay, well, this is how I behave and this is how I function. So I just want to be aware of it wherever I go. And then, you, and then you're aware of it and then you either go, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, Z to be better, or I'm just going to sit here and be aware of it and go, God, I really am like that. Or, or I really do do that. I can't believe that I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and either can be, either can be healthy or unhealthy, depending on where you are. It's just really up to the individual. I don't know. Is that deep? Where are God, we we're going for it. We're going for it. It reminds me a little bit. Uh, we had a combo today because uh, on Sunday we're playing at a church in Atlanta called Vinings Lake, and uh, they're actually inviting us to share and speak on worship and singing. And one of the things we talked about today was like, isn't it amazing that so many of the Psalms um, in current Western culture we like to just pull out the good lines that David wrote, like "Bless the Lord, O my soul," and all that is within me, which is awesome. But like we like do not want to sing. You know, the other stuff when he was honest, sad, and hard or, times. Or can I interrupt you there? Because we do. If you if you turn on any radio station, there are actually people who write songs, and, and you hear songs about like the 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 sadness or the lull or the heartbreak or um, the thing that happened, like the the sickness and, and that caused pain and death and all that stuff. But then. Always, it's it's typically always written in the verses, mm-hmm. and then when you get to the chorus, it's like, "But Lord, I know that you're here and that you're saving me, and everything's awesome." Absolutely. And that's great if that's for you. That's not for me. I need for me to 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 walk through full healing. I need to identify my pain, mm-hmm. sit with it for a while, and sit with it, and sit with it. And then, why do you have to sit with it that long? Because I need to understand why am I feeling this pain? Where did it come from? Am I responsible for it? Mm-hmm. I need to feel the full process of all of the emotions that are attributed to that thing that happened. 
to then move to then to, move forward. That's like your like way it's of, like a wheel spinning. Yeah. Like I can't just go here and then just be done. Out. Yeah. Yeah, I, the whole wheel needs to spin mm. for me to then. Do you feel like fly other up. people that would be helpful for them to do more of? Like, spend I think so. More, more I think time, so. like, why is this hurting me? Or why am I feeling this? Or, like, kind of go in there to see. I, I to think get the so. full, like, healing. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people think that's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And it takes too much energy, or it will distract them for some, from something <clears throat> happening in their life. Like, what if they've got a lot of momentum, but something painful just happened? Mm-hmm. Whoa, out of nowhere. And they don't, like, if I process this pain, then I up. can't, like, go for it right yeah. now. And I need to really go for it because this is my moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, I, I, I wish that there were more songs that stayed allowed allowed you to stay in the emotion and these are songs that i i'll be honest with you i i have a ton of them Mm -hmm. but i'm ashamed to put them out because i feel like everyone's gonna be like oh that's that really mopey christian but what about the encouragement you know you met up with your friend heidi (laughs) yeah yeah who's spoken to heidi Heidi. yeah and she's spoken to you about sometimes you feel like oh my songs are too honest and yeah i i usually read her a, a lot of my lyrics and uh-huh. sometimes even sing her the songs. Share, share with her what she said. I thought it was cool. Um, she said I, I was bawling. <laughs> I was like, I that's I would just I just read her a song that I had just written, and I'm like, this just sounds so sad. <laughs> like people are just gonna think that I'm like sad. I'm just always sad because I write from that place. Uh-huh. I don't like when I'm like thrilled in the front yard playing with the kids. I'm not like, oh, I need to go write a song right now. Praise song. Yeah, let's go. Let's go Maybe write a praise song. We should. Song. We should do Maybe that. Maybe we should. <laughs> praise song. <laughs> yeah. Until you. Next- but that's just not my um, go-to. I yeah. I go to those moments where I I am feeling something really deeply and intensely, and I want to write from that place. So I was telling her, you know, I feel so ashamed that I'm writing these songs and I can't like just write something about gratitude and and fully feel like I'm getting that same satisfaction as I am getting from writing about out of this pain and she looked at me and she's like no Kelly you write from a place of hope and I'm like are you just saying that to say the positive turn on this you know and 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 she made me see that in most of the songs that I do write I like I eventually get to a place where I'm like, even though it f- you feel the heaviness, mm-hmm. you certainly feel the heaviness of the song. <laughs> it's heavy, heavy. Um, and it squashes you. And then, and then, <laughs> but then there's this little glimmer of like, oh, but I believe that it can turn around. Mm-hmm. Or, but I'm not done yet. Or, this isn't over. So, and that was yeah. helpful for me. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's little, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's something. Growing. It's, it's something. Growing. And you got to start somewhere. And that's the biggest thing that I've been telling myself lately is you've mm. got to start somewhere. And and if you're not doing it, or if, if no one else is doing around you and only you are doing it, yeah. then that's probably a lie. Because people are probably <laughs> just doing it in closet, you know, in their closet. And you don't know about it. That reminds yeah. me. I do have to give a shout out. Uh, I see Caroline McClure's on here to Drew. Uh, and hey, Caroline, so glad you're here. Uh, shout out to Drew. He just put out a podcast this week, and we have had conversations. Talk about just doing it. It's called the Drew McClure Podcast, and we have had conversations for, I mean, years. I'm like, Drew, go for it, bro. Yeah. And like, exactly what you're saying, like, it's like, finally, just get in there and just go for it. Like, and I, we had heard some advice like from someone, I guess it was years ago. He said, do step one and surrender the consequences. Like we all get stopped with like, but then what would step four and step six and step nine mean? It's like, you don't know. You have no idea. So just start somewhere mm-hmm. and get in the get in the game. What, what was the line you just said? Like get in. Like, I don't know. <laughs> hey, do we'll, you know? I don't know. What we'll I find it. Uh, so anyways, I just want to encourage you like. If you have that idea, just start somewhere and surrender the consequences of what that means. And I do want to encourage you guys to check out this podcast because it is, mm-hmm. it's going to be amazing. 
as he gains courage to just share what's in his heart. Awesome. And I will say too, if you are if you are doing something, if you're wanting to do something, if you're sitting on something, and you don't have the feel like you have the momentum to go forward, it's like you know what, you're gonna be different than everybody. And I know that that can be scary and lonely and mm-hmm. maybe not fun. And I know people, a lot of people just want to have fun, and I get that. Um, don't do whatever it is that you're trying to do, so that you'll feel more loved. And that you'll feel more accepted. Um, that's not going to get you anywhere. That's going to take you to a place, and then you're all you're just going to crash. I promise you. Uh, and then you'll you'll have the midlife crisis later down the road, and then go back to square one and start all over. And you can do that, and people do that. But the healthy way to go is to own own you, own what you do, do what you do. If it looks like somebody else, what, what, what somebody else is doing. Don't worry about the competition thing. Invite them in. Like, say, hey, I see you're doing a lot of what I'm doing. Can you help me? Can you give me some input? Can you give me some advice? And become an apprentice. Not that you're going to become mirrors of them. You are beautifully unique, and it's impossible to be exactly like somebody else. Good word. Preach. Hashtag note to self. Uh, A few questions here. Also, I have to give another shout out. Caroline, you have a new blog. So check out Caroline McClure's Blogger. blog. Um, Drew. Blogger. <laughs> Kaiser, Kaiser Cam. Blogger. Put it in the link. Um, if you're being a mom, a songwriter, an artist, how do you juggle it all? What is important to you right now? Um, I don't know that I am juggling at all. I think <laughs> whatever I'm juggling, they're all, the things are all falling all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> But I, what's You're important? It, what's important to me right now is um, me being mentally um, strong and creative. And I have always been a fan of um, mental discipline practices. Mm-hmm. So, so whenever I get in a time where I'm like confused or I've taken into a swirl or whatever. Then I something that's really a helpful tool for me is to say, okay, well, what am I believing right now? Okay, for fun, I'm worthless. Um, well, what, <laughs> for fun, for fun. <laughs> uh, what is what's the truth in that? Okay, well, I feel worthless. Okay, well, are your feelings reality? Hmm. Okay, I might need help with that one. Mm. I might need help by asking this really great friend over here who's been down that road or mm-hmm. um, can help me see myself well. And I need her to give me what reality looks like. And then I can go, I can assess, oh, maybe my feelings aren't reality. So where, how did I get to that place where I thought it was my reality? See what I mean by staying on the wheel? Like people don't want to go through this process. It's really, it's really it takes a long time. And uh, then I, kind of just lift, it gets lifted out by doing mm-hmm. that. And, and I'm really, um, I've built the discipline to take every lie that goes on in my head apart and I break it down until I realize that it's a perception that I've built. It's based on my emotions. It's me, yeah. it's me believing that my emotions are real and valid <laughs> and um, truths. I've made these emotions into truths mm-hmm. and that's false mm. truths they're not actual truths man so this beautiful world inside my head <laughs> it's like this is like it's this like, is like cotton candy and ferris wheels <laughs> and roller skates no nope. who are you asking me that question about my thought bar all right <laughs> Y'all, let's talk about Miley for a second. <laughs> okay, now real quick about Thought Bar. Future of Thought Bar. Y'all, I don't know. I need some like shout outs or something from Thought Bar because like I was talking about earlier, I need people to know that like, like I need people to tell me that this is beneficial mm. because otherwise I feel like I'm just putting a, a thought that I've had out into space Cyber and it's space. like, it's like more for my personal confidence than it is helpful for anybody. Mm-hmm. So I've, that's kind of why I've slowed down on it. Um, 
so if, if it's inspiring you, then just be like, thumbs up. I don't, you don't have to say anything deep. Just give me like a thumbs up. I don't care. Uh, I've attached the blog to it now though. Come on. Did I just say that out loud? Crap, I just said that out loud. That sounded like a bad word. <sighs> blog. Blog. Blog is like equivalent to some curse words. Well, word. because for me, for me, for shit. For me, blogging means that I'm going to just take a, about 30 minutes so I can just bleed onto the internet and no one else is responding to it. <laughs> so you don't that's that, just huh? hard. That's, well, it's just hard because I do feel a lot of the shame um, of being the sad person and people wondering, well, why are you so sad? You're so this and you're so that. Babe, you're not sad. sad all the time. I know I'm not sad you all the time, but if I'm putting sadness tonight. But if I'm putting these things out, like these songs that are sad, these songs that you're are deep and You're not always writing slow, sad songs. These these thought bars that are deep and intense and mysteries and oh no one wants the mystery and these blogs that are about my pain and blo- pain who oh. wants pain pain give me joy it's like Halloween I need to be pain for Halloween <laughs> you be a pain killer you be a pain killer inside, oh, out, inside God. out gosh oh man stop they introduce him really the beautiful oh, hey, so be so great. I just got distracted because Inside Out was like seriously my life. My doppelganger is that blue girl. Sadness. Sadness. Anyway. The movie is. How did we get on this? Oh, oh so Thought Bar. Yes. Just give me a little love and I'll keep going. Otherwise, it's just like. No, you need to keep doing it. It's powerful. Y'all, I'm hot. Um, anyway. This is so different than what okay. you experience at a ceremony gathering, so, by the way. So, what do I think of Molly on The Voice? I want to know who asked me this question. Uh, I bet it was Kaiser Cam. Was it, was it you, Kaiser? <laughs> you little piece. Okay, I think Miley is fierce. I think she's bomb for having an all-female um, team. Way to go, Miley. Shout out. <laughs> like you're going to watch this. Um, and I think she's great. That's it. That's good. All right. Yeah, I love the voice. I watch that. He hates it. I love it, but I watch it all the no, time. No, I think it's cool. Hi, Britt. My friend Britt's um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Anything else we want to jump into before we... Oh, so this this season, if we can get uh, Kaiser Cam to keep showing up um, to our house, <laughs> he's been very busy. And He got uh, a new house, guys. It's a yeah. big deal. So we're going to... We've already reached out to Jason Upton. We're going to do a call-in with him. We've got a few other friends. We want to bring Randall Ooh. back on. Randall just put out a new book. So we've got some friends yeah. that we want to bring on and just uh, hopefully we can um, yeah, get a little more <laughs> just uh, insight from friends that have been inspiring us and guiding us over the last few years. Um, if you're expecting more scriptures tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Over the summer, what were your biggest three influences? One that book. That was true. One that song. Wasn't anybody. That was true. One podcast. Um, man, the typology one has been really good. Uh, just to get some insight onto you know different personalities and different people. And Ian Crone. Actually, I was at a writers retreat. God, probably ten years ago, and he was there. And I remember him leading this session. He's like, every morning. I wake up, I light a candle, and I look at the flicker for one minute. And I was like, wow, this guy is deep. Like. Do you see that? That's exactly what I'm afraid of. That's exactly what I'm afraid people think of when I open my mouth. I was like, That wow. he's going to go to, you're going to go to somebody else and you go, oh my gosh, did you hear Kelly said? Kelly said, oh, and pain. And pain is just so beautiful. And you need to find the beauty in pain. But Ian is awesome. He's a four, and he has this beautiful podcast, and a dear friend, Anthony Skinner, has been on it, and it's been, yeah, it's been really cool. So uh, that's been a great new podcast. One song, um, yeah, I mean, the new Killers album is really great. It's great. It's so good. Um, Don't give up on me. I'm just in a rut. Okay? um, There you go. One book. I've been reading a book called The Immortal Diamond Ooh. by um, Richard Rohr, R-O-H-R. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. It, it helps you get insight into... Um, he, does, he breaks down the idea of a true self and a false self. And um, 
in Scripture, Paul references a lot the word flesh, which uh, in, in a few passages actually it is, it's pointing to an idea of um, it wasn't just your flesh. Because actually when you look at all the other scriptures, he's not talking about denying your body. But he's actually trying to reference this, this thing you build, you create. It's not real, but it's your, your ego. So, and your true self is... Um, you know, it's the gold in you. It's God. It's His Spirit. And we are learning through life to um, fall into that, trust that, um, rest into that, flow from that place, not just from this ego thing we create. So it's been really helpful for me uh, in our journey. And um, yeah, I would, I would encourage you to check it out. He's been a really helpful guide for for many of us at this stage and he's not the only guy you know we're not we're at enough stage in our life where we're not just listening to one person you know but he's been really helpful um for us and you know even i mentioned like we're talking at vining's lake on sunday and i think um one of the questions even cody asked he said when you walk away from a night what do you say is like an awesome night you know or a sunday morning service like what do you like what's an amazing sunday morning when I was 16, I remember driving home from youth group and I was telling my parents, I was like, no one was jumping. I was so sad like the whole youth group wasn't jumping, right? Because that was of top importance when you're 16. So, uh, and somehow that continued on into my early 20s because uh, we were playing a bunch of youth gatherings. We right? had the fist pump in a lot oh, of their songs. Man. And I remember the moment actually... <laughs> We were in Canada, and uh, I looked out, and Jason Upton, God, I love that guy, sweetheart, he was fist pumping to one of our songs. and He loved it. He still loves it. And Pat pulled me aside after. He's like, bro, I can never, I can never play one of those songs and look out in the crowd and see Jason Upton fist pumping to one of our songs. And that was a moment where we stopped playing a lot of our songs. And it wasn't the idea that fist pumping was wrong. It was like, what are we doing? Why are we writing these songs? What's the point? Is are it just writing, to get yeah. the crowd into it? Or do we care about leading people into this deeper place with God? So that all being said, when I get done with a gathering, the idea is, did we help move the people forward? So for instance... It's in, something that you can't measure. You can't fully measure. Right. Absolutely. Because you don't know what's happening right. exactly with every And so it's person. really beautiful for like, because we, while we're up there, when we're, when we're singing and, and worshiping and doing whatever, we are totally, we're, it's like an inner thing that's happening. Absolutely. And even You're with people who are sitting this, out, yeah. like it's an inner, it's always, for everyone, it's an inner thing that's happening. Yeah. And so you're not thinking about the other person. But then when the night's over, we're like, gosh, I hope people liked it. Yeah. And it's so helpful for, for people to walk up to us afterward and say, hey, this specifically mm-hmm. is what helped me. And, and here's why and here's how. And um, that feedback is really good because we want to know that there has a, an exchange. Has yeah, happened. absolutely. You know, like what we're doing is, is, is meaningful. I think any artist wants to know what they're doing is meaningful. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, sometimes on different gatherings like it might mean for a crowd that's uh, really expressive it might mean for a group to actually like take some time and like be silent be yeah. still listen you know for a crowd that's all mind like a bend toward like we just want to like think about it all you know it might be a space to go hey also when jesus talked about worship he said There's spirit balance. and truth yeah it's balance, like it's not all just mind truth it's actually spirit it's your heart mm-hmm. it's your your mouth singing, it's your body moving. It's like that is all also like an invitation to love God. Mind, so, body, spirit. Yeah, so I don't know. I think there's, uh, you know, the heart is how, how can we all, all together move forward into communion with God? So, um, yeah, and I like that about feedback because, um, you know, you don't always know, but sometimes, sometimes even we've had times where we've stepped out and done something and you don't hear the feedback until like days later and you're mm-hmm. like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, even this last cer- ceremony gathering, like, well, I kind of was like, man, I don't know. I thought it was okay, you know? And then we got some feedback about some reconciliation and forgiveness happening and just like some beautiful stories mm-hmm. of people that have been praying for stuff for years. Years. And it happened in this moment in the presence of God. And it's like, mm. wow, that's, that's awesome. That stuff can still happen. Yeah. You know, so 
Yeah. It's good. Well, all right. Y'all well, got an earful. Y'all, we just went for it. Uh, I hope. I don't remember much of what I said because I was just so in shock that I was saying a lot of it. <laughs> we, so I'll watch this back. Maybe, maybe not. So, uh, well, thank you guys so much. Next Friday, we have the next bread and wine gathering. So, love hope to have you there. guys out. We are, you know, we're updating our events, whatever page on our website. Um, you can go there and see other spots we're playing. We're traveling out. We're going to do a thing in West Virginia in November and a few other spots. So just check it out. Um, we'll be also in the area the day after the Bread and Wine Gathering in Marietta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to play at Resurgent. Yeah, yeah. At Chris Oliver's spot. So can't wait to be with yeah. him and Terry. And it's going to be beautiful. Um, so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for... Thanks for listening. And if you stopped... We love you anyway. Yes. <laughs> Go love back you to your Netflix. <laughs> Clemson game. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.